Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 574 entitled Cutting a Pinion Gear. Now, in this video series of four, this is number three, and you recall that I already cut a rack like this two different ways, and in this video I'm going to cut the pinion gear that will match that rack. It'll be one inch in diameter. And that will be done on the Bridgeport mill using the little hardinge 1 to 4 ratio dividing head. So uh, let's get started. The tooth depth will remain the same at 0 .108 inches whether it be a rack or a pinion for that pitch size which is 20 diametral pitch. Now what is the diameter of my gear? Well I arbitrarily and capriciously decided that it will be one inch in diameter. Why one inch in diameter? Because it's pretty much proportional to what uh, the little rack is. This is a half inch and will also fit in the little mock-up the do-nothing machine that I will make where I mate the uh, rack with the pinion and that will be done in the following video. So anyway, one inch diameter and there is the stock and I'll cut that to the line here which is about two inches. In the last videos I cut a rack and I used cutter number one. Since this will be 18 teeth I will be using cutter number six which will cut anywhere between 17 and 20 teeth and mine is 18. I took this formula from the little black book and I might be working just a little bit backwards but the formula for the diameter, outside diameter, equals n plus 2 over the pitch, n being the number of teeth, so 18 teeth plus 2 over the diametral pitch of 20, carry it down to here, it's 20 over 20 which is 1 inch, simple enough. In the last video I talked about linear pitch and I told you that circular pitch and linear pitch are the same and there's the calculations for that. Came out to 0.157 inches and to uh, carry that one step further and this may not show up very well but the calipers are set for the circular or the linear pitch of 0.157 and if I'm able to put that on there fairly accurately, it in focus. You can see that that's the linear pitch and then on this sample of the gear, of course, it's going to be the same. A little shaky, but you get the idea. It was only last year that I discovered there were tables to help you with the dividing head, the index head. Now, I finally found this one on the hardens, but the hardens, remember, is a 4 to 1 ratio. But to cut 18 teeth right here, I think I will zoom in on that. I'm going to cut 18 teeth, so that's 18 divisions, and they are telling me to use the circle with 18 holes and that's already set up and that there will be no full turns, that's what that zero means, but just four holes. Cut a tooth, move four more holes and I'll show you that when we get over there. Now I am readily aware that probably I'm the only one in the continental United States that has a hardinge dividing head four to one. This page came from the book entitled Gear Cutting Practice and here is a page called Gear Cutting with an Index Head, Tables for Indexing. So looking down the column here I'll find 18 teeth per inch because if anyone should be doing this you probably have a dividing head that has 40 to 1 ratio. That means 40 turns of the crank and the spindle turns one. Alright, so for 18 divisions they are telling you to use the index circle, that is the plate with 27 holes, and you would turn it two and 
I gotta zoom in to be able to read that. Two and six twenty-seven. So it'll be two full turns and six holes on the twenty-seven circle. Is that clear as mud at all? I'm at the Bridgeport Mill and this is the setup. This is the little hardened dividing head four to one ratio. The cutter, cutter number six, is already mounted in that homemade uh, arbor that I made just for this job. And now we have to set the depth of tooth, uh, the depth of cut for the teeth, and find the center. Now I also could have used the setup that I made in the first video for cutting a rack with that angle head, but I decided to use uh, the vertical method here is simply because more people will have this type of setup and it's simple enough to do in either case. This dividing head came from a school about 30 miles away from here so it's pretty beat up but yet it's still quite usable but this chuck is mutilated beyond belief, this three jaw chuck for many years use so I took it off and I've, it is threaded spindle, so I, I made that uh, protector in a video some time ago. This uses 5C collets, but also the uh, drawbar was missing, so I made the drawbar some time ago. And looking on the back side, this is the homemade drawbar, which is actually the drawbar from a spin index. This little chuck, as I said, is mutilated. Almost beyond belief. Also, I do not have the other set of jaws for it, and it does not run true at all. That's why I'm using the one inch collet. And that is also, I guess I could tell you, <laughs> why I chose to make the gear one inch in diameter so that I didn't have to turn or prepare stock. The largest collets that will fit in here are one and one sixteenth. I will be cutting the teeth up to this black line which is a, oh, about an inch and a quarter. The first thing I need to do is to set the cutter at the center line of the work. Now there's a lot of ways to do that. You could just leave a little tit on there and bring the center of the cutter to that mark. It would probably be close enough. You can use a height gauge, you can use a surface gauge, and there's probably a lot of other ways. I'm going to do it uh, one other way. Let me show you that, which I think is probably the easiest and the best. The thickness of this cutter is 144 thousandths. The diameter here is of course one inch. So I need to move the cutter down lower it or raise the table, whatever, half the diameter, so I should say the radius of the work and half the thickness of the uh, the cutter. Half the thickness is 72 thousandths and the radius of this is 500, so I will kiss off, touch off, like that, lock the quill, move it out, and I will raise the table 572 thousandths, and that should bring me right on center, or within a thousandth. All right, let's do it. The cutter is in contact with the work. I'm locking the quill. I zeroed out the graduated collar on the knee. One, two, three, four, five hundred and... 72 and I'll lock the knee. So I'm at the center. Easy enough. I think I'll add this, although it's probably not necessary, but the work again is only about two inches out of the dividing head. I think it is rigid enough. If it is not, or if your work is, you know, extends way out, you will need a tailstock center such as this with a center hole to support it and steady it. I am not going to do that. I don't think it's necessary for this short piece of work. 
Okay, I'm going to set the tooth depth, which is 0 .108. I put tape on the work, and I just want to scratch it. You can run the machine, but I think I'll just rotate the spindle by hand until it touches. Okay, it tore the tape. I set the digital readout for zero. Now off camera I have set the graduated dial on the Y axis to zero and I'm going to move it in 108 thousandths. And lock the table. You can see the y-axis is at 108. Even though I turned the dial, you can see the dial is pretty accurate when I look up there. And the x-axis is at zero, but I will reset that so that I have a consistent length of uh, tooth. I do not have a stop to use. Let's turn our attention to this. Remember that four turns turns the spindle once. So I've already selected and set the plunger and the pin so it will go into the circle that says 18. I don't know if I can zoom in on that or not. Okay, and I have set the sector here so that it spans let me get it around, spans four holes. I always like to start in the 12 o'clock position, always clockwise, so I do not introduce any backlash. So, bringing it around here, I like to let it drop in. You'll hear it click there. And then bring the uh, sector, or I sometimes call it a spider, up against that. I will cut a tooth, and then I will advance this. I'm going to show you now because that may not show up in the video, but I like to, this is kind of loose, so I like to hold that and then just bring it around and then it would be ready for the next tooth. And I have to do that 18 times.
and I always bring it around to the last tooth to see if it zeroes out on the index plate and does the cutter end up back in uh, tooth number one and it does so I can take it out. Well, there it is, and it looks pretty good. I cleaned it up, took most of the dye off of it. A fellow's always a little tense when he first takes it out of the machine because there could very well be one fat tooth and one skinny tooth. I remember the kids bringing me their work, and uh, like, like this, this is one of the jobs, and they thought everything was okay, but from a half a uh, classroom away, Half a shop away, I could see they had a fat tooth and then some other place a skinny tooth. So then it was scrap and they would get extremely discouraged. And I guess I don't blame them. We didn't have a digital readout back then. But anyway, this one looks good. Thank you for watching. And now in the next and final part of this four part series, I will take the rack. I should show you this, that it fits fine. However, remember, it, it won't uh, go all the way in. There's a little bit of space, which we call the working depth. And I will set it up into a mock piece here with a whole board in it and uh, a slot and even a little cover plate to make sure that they work and show you how to fit all that up. So, hope you liked the video. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it.